Stanley Nelson Lundeen was born February 4, 1939 in Jamestown, New York to Ruth and G. Elving Lundeen. He attended Jamestown High School where he played basketball, golf, and competed for the varsity debate team. Stan was also part of Lyceum, the Key Club, and in his senior year, the senior play. He was a real serious student. He was a, uh, a debate, uh, a member of the debate team and a uh, champion debater. He debated all over Western New York. And he, he was he was a lot of fun when he wasn't serious about debating or, you know, he was serious about his grades because he wanted to go to a good school, which he did and went to Duke. And while at Duke University, Stan joined the debate team and the University Sailing Club. He was also president of the Young Democrats Club and met with John F. Kennedy during Kennedy's visit to campus in 1959. After receiving his bachelor's, Stan continued his education at the New York University School of Law. He graduated in 1964 and was admitted to the New York State Bar in 1965. I had an offer from a single practitioner here in Jamestown to join him, so I did. As a volunteer, I served on the City Planning Commission, and that's what sort of got me involved with local issues. And in 1969, Stan Lindeen announced he would run for mayor and assembled a team of prominent community members to run for city council. Uh, Stan Lindeen had a knack for finding, and always has, uh, finding the right people at the right time to make things happen in Jamestown. He just uh, was remarkable. that You had this young mayor coming in with his blue ribbon ticket and it was going to move and had moved Jamestown in a uh, strong positive position. On November 5th, 1969, Stan defeated Republican incumbent Charles Magnuson. As soon as Stan took office, he began making changes in Jamestown. Many believe that his greatest accomplishment was establishing the Labor Management Committee. Um, he set up what was to be probably the biggest change in labor management relations in the United States by setting up this committee. And I'll never forget turning on the national news one day and they were featuring what Stan had set up in Jamestown, New York. Jamestown was famous for, for terrible uh, uh, labor relations. They had strikes back in the 40s and 50s that would go on for months and months and months. The concept was pretty simple. Uh, labor and management should sit together, Stan thought, and talk out their problems like a mediation format. It had a beneficial effect on our attempting to attract industries here, especially Cummins Enza. Stan Lindeen and I played a big role in attracting that company. Solving labor management tensions was only a small part of Stan's job. The mayor of Jamestown had plenty of other responsibilities. Being mayor of Jamestown then, we were the sole sponsor of the community college. We had a hospital. Uh, we had a bus system, an airport, the largest uh, electric, municipal electric system in the state. The city was trying to do more than it was capable of doing, and it just couldn't handle all the stuff that it was doing, and he downsized the city. That Stan uh, took the leadership in legislation that uh, would transfer any city welfare department to the county's budget and to the county's responsibility. As mayor, Stan believed Jamestown would benefit from redevelopment. He initiated an urban renewal program in the hopes of bringing positive change to the city. Stan was also an environmentally conscious leader. He understood how crucial environmental awareness was. On April 22, 1970, Stan teamed up with the Kiwanis Club to demonstrate the effect of pollution on Jamestown. In Jamestown, New York, the Kiwanis Club arranged to dump 20 tons of sand in a downtown area to show just how much dirt falls in one square mile of the city during just 30 days of maximum air pollution. Stan also signed the Earth Day Proclamation in 1970 along with several other United States and world leaders. In January 1976, Representative James F. Hastings resigned. Stan decided to run in the special election to fill the vacancy. Most people said you don't have a chance. Even my closest the contacts in Washington and so on. Basically put together quite a team in a short amount of time and 
Um, I think the Republicans never thought it would happen. There never been a Democrat elected to the Congress. Despite the challenges, Stan was elected to the 94th Congress. This was a remarkable win for Stan as he was the first Democrat to be elected to the district since the late 1800s. Unfortunately, the celebration was short-lived. Elections for the 95th Congress were right around the corner and Stan needed to continue campaigning to prove to his district that he could lead them. Stan's hard work paid off as he was re-elected to the next five succeeding Congresses. During his time in Congress, Stan was a leader in efforts to generate domestic and international economic development and continued to encourage labor management cooperation. He also took the leadership in legislation dealing with radioactive waste from West Valley. West Valley was a depository for nuclear waste. It had accepted nuclear waste for a long time. Then they were going to decommission it, and then that's when Stan prepared the legislation. The West Valley Demonstration Project Act brought many jobs to the area and served as a demonstration for other nuclear facilities on the solidification and removal of nuclear waste. To recapitulate briefly, this bill that I will sign now will provide a joint federal-state partnership which will be innovative in nature, set a standard for the rest of the country in the disposal of nuclear waste materials. Stan also proposed legislation to reform international economic development programs and served as chairman of the International Development Subcommittee. In 1986, Governor Mario Cuomo was looking for a lieutenant governor to campaign with him for the upcoming election. Many people speculated that Cuomo would ask Stan. I said, you know, there's only three Democrats, I mean, my, at the time, in my view, upstate, north of the Tappan Zee Bridge, who have the same positions on things like the death penalty and so on as Mario Cuomo. And so I said, you're one of the three. <laughs> and you're the most senior. You're a congressman with some terms behind you and you've won upstate. And he's got to go upstate, I think, for his lieutenant governor. And uh, gosh, it wasn't probably three or four months later, Stan called me and said, I got the phone call. <laughs> On November 4, 1986, Governor Cuomo was re-elected Governor of New York and Stan was elected Lieutenant Governor of New York. To have a Lieutenant Governor come from way out here in a small town, rural area, not Buffalo, not Syracuse, upstate, Jamestown. I mean, it was significant, very significant. Stan was assigned several positions as Lieutenant Governor. He was the Chairman of the Governor's Anti-Drug Abuse Council, Head of the Job Training Partnership Council, and an advocate for high-speed trains connecting New York cities. He also traveled on behalf of the Governor and was considered the voice of upstate New York. Stan also helped bring the President to Western New York. The first time was in 1992 when candidate Bill Clinton was on the road for the Clinton-Al Gore campaign. Stan introduced Clinton to a rally in Bester Plaza at the Chautauqua Institution. And next year we'll be able to add another distinguished president of the United States of America, Governor Bill Clinton of Arkansas, to that honor roll. Stan's dedication to the state was unparalleled, and many believed he would make a great governor. He came close twice, once in 1992 when Governor Cuomo contemplated running for president, and again in 1993 when President Clinton considered Cuomo for the Supreme Court. After the 1994 election, Stan retired from electoral politics and returned to Jamestown. And he chose to come back here and get involved in an area and an issue that we really needed, some guidance. And that's when he started the Chautauqua Healthcare Network. Over the years, Stan was involved with many other local organizations and currently serves on the board of directors at the Robert H. Jackson Center. Stan never forgot Chautauqua County, even though he left here, went to D.C., went to Albany. He came back here and tried to fulfill a need now, he and Sarah spend a certain amount of time at their home in North Carolina, but they also have a residence here. And I don't think he could ever give that up. Mm -hmm. I really don't. This is home. 